fill underneath that conduit to support it. That was probably disturbed earth. So the disturbed earth settled. I'm Joel Walsman, CEO and Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric, and I'd like to bring a couple things to your attention right here. We're going to dive into a couple of the rules and regulations that the utility company has set forth. In this case, these are specific to our utility company. Every utility company will have a published book of standards. These standards are the minimum standards, but they're typically referred to as the gold book. The gold book is a document that is distinct from the National Electrical Code. Both reference electrical service and metering equipment, but in this case, the utility company is the AHJ. They are the authority that has jurisdiction. They are regulated, but from our perspective, they regulate us with respect to installation standards. The other uh, requirement that you need to satisfy is your local building inspector and his requirements. So the, essentially, the electrical contractor is the responsible party to marry the standards in unity for a successful installation that is not flagged, rejected, or denied. In this case, we have an 800 amp service underground coming into service this small business. Behind us, we have a 12,000 square foot small business that's mixed commercial real estate events, coffee, and a co-work studio. This 800 amp service uh, services the entire building. We're going to reference standards here one at a time so you have a sense as to what considerations to make when bringing together an electrical distribution system. This distribution system is underground so it is fed from a pad mount utility transformer around the corner. There is open trench 36 inches deep brought to this location. Two service risers feeding 400 amps apiece into the cabinet. The cabinet, uh, the wires essentially turn inside the cabinet and exit the other side. This meter is a CT meter, meaning the power does not pass through the meter itself, but the power cap passes through current transformers. This meter is strictly monitoring the power that is flowing through this cabinet. As you can see, the cabinet is locked, and that's because access is only given by the utility company. So coordinations need to be made. In this case, big picture coordinations were made three months in advance of the installation of this project. The utility company will typically provide an engineer to meet the electrical contractor on site, in addition to the homeowner or property owner, to define the terms of the installation and all of the relevant standards. We were provided with a, a written document that provided clarity on the installation standards. Some of those standards include at least three feet of clearance, minimum three feet of clearance from the edge of the cabinet to the corner, whether it's an inside or outside corner of the building. At least three feet of clearance from windows and doors to the utility cabinet itself. The meter and the height of the cabinet are defined as five to six feet above final grade, and that is measured to the top of the meter itself. So the top of the meter must fall between five and six feet from final grade. Right down here we have the service risers. Now these are two four inch schedule 80. That's a heavy wall PVC conduit coming into male adapters that are sealed to the bottom of this cabinet. Right here we've got uh, evidence that one of these risers is actually peeling away from the male adapter. And you know what caused that? That riser was fully seated two inches into that male adapter. What caused that was the when the open trench was dug and the conduit was laid, there was not sufficient fill underneath that conduit to support it. That was probably disturbed earth. So the disturbed earth settled and all the dirt on top of the service lateral and riser conduit settled on top of that conduit and forced the separation. That was a glued joint, but it's forced the separation. So it's real important in the installation of these conduits to make sure it's a tight seal and they're properly supported by the dirt underneath to maintain that tight seal. It's important to note that it is not the duty of the electrician to memorize these standards. It is the duty of the electrician to be able to properly interpret the published standards, to synthesize them into a safe and uniform installation that's complete. All right, so we've just been talking about 
electrical services and distribution systems. And in future videos, we're gonna be talking about ugh, stuff like this. So like and subscribe.